Hi and welcome back to this new video. We will talk about phasers. Phasers are used in AC circuits where it's a frequency dependency and it's very useful for calculating the whole complex circuit. What is a phaser? A phaser is a complex number that represents the amplitude and phase of a sinusoid. For example, if you have a signal which is given in time domain like this, in very general form, here we have the amplitude, that is the A, that is the amplitude. This, the theta, which is called phase, and this, the omega, is called the radiant frequency. Uh, to work uh, through a couple of examples, if you, if you see expression like this, for current also, for power, that's also possible, you can easily go with the amplitude and the phase if the frequency stays constant. That is really important. If the frequency is constant for all of the components, all of the devices, then you can assume or use the uh, polar notation or the phase, phaser system which uses only the amplitude and the phase. Let's start with a complex number to illustrate the concept. What is a complex number? Complex number Complex number can be represented in a very general form. C is equal to the x plus jy. Here x is the real part of the z and y is the imaginary part of z and it's also called the rectangular form because it is given in a summation form so you see the real part plus the imaginary part so this is called rectangular form rectangular form sometimes you will need to use this representation for example addition or subtraction we will talk about this later so this one is the real part the real and this is the imaginary part okay now that's all for well, in terms of the rectangular form you can also represent the complex number z in in a polar form that will help when you want to use addition or division for, uh, for multiplication I mean and for division so for rectangular form you use actually the uh, addition and subtraction for subtraction and addition you use a rectangular form that is easy and for multiplication and for division it is much more easier to use the polar form so what's actually in the polar form now let's look at this polar form well, again, z is equal to r, some value, we'll talk about it shortly, and there is a phase theta. Now, what is r? r is the length of the vector, which is the z, is x squared plus y squared, and a square root of that. That's actually a very known formula. And what is the theta? Theta is the phase of the complex number is actually the value of the imaginary part divided by the value of the real part that's this is what we call the polar form this is the polar form so if you want to draw this in a diagram form you will get a picture like this you have the real part and you have the imaginary part and if you want you can have a arrow like this that's the z and you can go down vertically then you find the x component or the real part and you find the y component if you go to the y-axis jy so that's actually the representation and of course you have the theta which is given here 
which is which is the arrow blue arrow with respect, respect to the positive real axis so actually that's measured respect to the positive real axis okay that's actually what we can say about the representation of the phaser if you go from the complex number you go to the polar and it's the graphical form graphical representation let's look at an example very simple example and to try to illustrate the concept in more detail okay Let's look at an example. Suppose you have a value like z is equal to 3 plus j5. Now what we want is we want to put this in the polar form. Polar form. Okay, let's draw this, make a sketch. It will, it's always helpful. Okay, then you see there is a j5 and there's a 3 so actually there is a vector like this and this is c so you can see this is the theta okay what is the r the r here is let's calculate that r is the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared and that is actually the square root of 34 but you can approximate this to 5.83 okay and the corresponding phase theta is arctangent of 5 divided by 3 okay now that will be approximately 59 degrees Then you get in the polar rotation like this z is equal to 5.83 phase 59 degrees if you have a, for example a unit here volts or something else you need to also place the volt here okay that's actually what for this example you have also operations for the complex values like addition subtraction multiplication I will go through this also step by step so let's go to the operations first is the addition So what is addition if you have for example the z is like a plus j b and you have another complex number which is w is equal to c plus j d if you want the addition for example z plus w then you can write it in this form it's very easy you just count the real part together so it is a plus c i just put it in parentheses for to make the uh, situation much more clear and you take their imaginary parts together and that's actually your notation okay actually this uh, parenthesis is not necessary but this is necessary and if you want to do the subtraction subtract for example z minus w what do you then okay it is an a plus plus jb again a minus c plus jd and if you again look at the components you have the real part that's actually what you take and you have and you have the imaginary part and that you combine then you get the following a minus c i will also place this in parentheses and j is b minus d that's actually what you get okay i think i made a mistake it is b in the first equation 
first example for addition I mean is B plus D so this one is A plus C and then B plus D in the geometry part all right let's go to the multiplication that's also very important and uh, also very handy in some situations what you see is if you use addition or you need addition or subtraction or both then you can leave your complex uh, form in rectangular form so if you're a complex number keep it in a rectangular form if you want to do the addition or the subtraction if you want to have a multiplication then it is better or it is much more easier to go to the polar form so I will do that also so I will uh, determine the required parameters for the polar form for Z and also for W so I will calculate R sub Z which is equal to square root of A plus B and you have also R sub W which is square root of C squared T squared and of course you need the thetas so theta z is equal to arctangent is b divided by a and arctangent of w is or theta w is arctangent d divided by c okay now let's look at the uh, multiplication If you do Z times W, that means you do RZ face theta Z between parentheses, and then you have RW theta W in this sense. Now, if you have a multiplication of two complex numbers in polar form, what you do is you multiply the magnitudes, that is the vector length, actually the RZ multiplied by RW, that's actually what you do, and you add the phases. So it's actually theta Z plus theta W. That's actually what you have. Now, in case you have a division, that's actually possible again leave it in the polar form which is much more easier to work with so what you do is for example if you need z divided by w then you can again use the polar form and you get this then you divide the magnitudes and you subtract the faces so actually what you get in total is RZ divided by RW phase phase of the Z minus the phase of W that's actually what you need so it's actually uh, simple if you look at the to multiplication and the division rules using multiplication in a polar form you just multiply the magnitudes and add the phases and if you do division you divide the magnitudes and you subtract the phases you do you do the subtraction like phase of the uh, z minus the phase of the w in this sense now let's look at the uh, the following uh, important rules like taking powers or exponentiation exponentiation which is very important and can be useful for several reasons if you want z to the power n some number it must be uh, not necessarily uh, uh, integer it can be also uh, 1 divided by 3 some, something else so if you want to do, do this also in this sense it is better easier to use the polar notation so it is actually what I do here and I do that to the power of n now if you have this what you do is really easy you do you do the magnitude 
to the power of n and you do the phase times n. So the phase will be multiplied by this n and the magnitude or the factor length will be to the power of n. So I will write it down. So it's r z to the power of n and the phase is n. I will do it in parentheses to make sure everything is clear. Okay. That's actually for uh, the exponentiation, taking powers. Now the last part also very really useful is complex conjugate. Complex con complex con conjugate. Okay. Okay, how does that work? Now complex conjugate, the notation for complex conjugate is Z star, that means the complex conjugate of Z. That's actually really easy and it is it doesn't matter if you have the rectangular form or the polar form, it says only just uh, take the inverse sign of your imaginary part. So what I mean is if you have z is equal to a plus j b, like here, in this case, then you what you do is you keep your real part, but you do minus j b. If you had a minus j b, you do a plus j b, so you invert or you set the sign correct in this form. So if you want for the W, it's exactly the same situation. W star is is not C minus J D. Okay. And if you want to go to the polar form, it's actually very easy and you do you do this so it's actually again rz is which is the magnitude of the uh, z that stays the same it is not uh, changing it's only the phase which will be negative so again for the w star is exactly the same situation and you do it like this Okay, now, uh, last part is the Euler's identity. After that, we will dive in some examples. I will do that in a separate video to illustrate the concept. Euler's identity, Euler's ident identity, which is very useful, which is said like this. If you have e to the power plus or minus g theta, some uh, phase, and this phase must be in radians. That's really important if you just work only with uh, or with uh, e to the power. Is equal to cosine of this phase plus or minus, depending on what sign you have, j sine theta. So that means the cosine is of theta is actually the real part of e to the power g theta and the imaginary part of that is sine the sine of theta is equal to the imaginary part of e to the power j theta Okay, that's actually in general what is a phaser and how can we represent it in a polar form, also in a rectangular form, how you uh, work it out if you want to make addition, division, maybe multiplication. If you need complex conjugate or exponentiation, you can also follow these rules. I will upload uh, another video shortly about examples using uh, phasers and all those uh, uh, rules we have discussed here and it will make the situation much more clear but just uh, stay tuned if you like the video give a thumbs up and share this video so it will reach more people thank you very much for your attention and see you next time